Hello and welcome to this video on small factor loadings in confirmatory factor analysis and how to deal with them. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to multivariate statistical methods such as structural equation models, factor models, latent class models, and multi-level models. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly newsletter and other videos. In this video here, I want to address an issue that I frequently get questions about as a statistical consultant, and that is people running factor analyses often encounter the case where some of the factor loadings are suboptimal or what they consider suboptimal, they're relatively small, and then people often don't know how to interpret that and um, they are un unsure about whether this is a problem, whether this needs to be addressed, how it can be addressed, and so on. And so I want to address some of these um, issues here in this video. Here you can see an M plus output file, specifically the standardized solution for a simple confirmatory factor analysis model with three indicators and a single factor that I use here as an example. And we're looking at the completely standardized solution here, meaning that in this solution, both the observed variables or indicators y1 through y3 and also the factor f are standardized so that we can interpret these loadings as correlations between each variable and the underlying factor. And so this is the M plus output file right here. And so here under estimate, you can see the standardized factor loadings for y1, y2, and y3 on the factor f. And so you can see the loading of the first indicator or observed variable y1 is only 0.419. So this indicates that this variable is correlated 0.419 with a factor which is not very high for a variable that is supposed to be a measure of that factor. So it shows you or um, one way in which we can make this even clearer is by looking at the R squared, which is simply the standardized factor loading squared. And so you can see that then when we square that factor loading, we obtain an R squared value of only 0.175. So only 17.5% of the observed variance in that measure is accounted for by the factor F. So the factor only explains, so to say, about 17.5% of individual differences in that variable and the rest would be error variance in the sense of this factor model or and or specific item variance. And so therefore, this is not typically not seen as a satisfactory factor loading when it's something um, like that for a primary variable that is supposed to measure this factor. Things look a little bit better for Y2. So you can see Y2 has a standardized factor loading of 0.773. So the correlation there is um, fairly high between the variable and the factor and the R squared is 0.598. So about 60% of the variance in that variable is accounted for by that factor. And that could be seen as satisfactory when you have a multi um, indicator scale and um, a loading of 0.773 is not too bad, but something that is 0.419 or um, 0 0.4182, excuse me, for Y3, this is something that we would see as suboptimal. So then the first question is to so say, why is that? What is the reason that these variables load so um, or have such small loadings and or why are the loadings so inconsistent across the three variables where one loads decently and then the other two do not have substantial or satisfactory loading. So wh how can we explain that? And so uh, the way or one way to understand what's going on is to look at the 
correlation matrix of the observed variables and look at their relationships between because after all say what we're modeling here are the covariances between the variables so the factor variance for example is um, conceptually speaking is a function of the covariances of these observed variables and so as a result when we have um, small covariances and or small correlations between variables then that leads to a weak factor with small standardized loadings and a small factor variance estimate relative to the estimated error variances. So let's take a look at the correlation matrix which in M plus we obtain under sample statistics. In this case I used summary data and so I directly apply the model to a correlation matrix which we typically wouldn't do but here for this example this is um, it doesn't matter and so the sample statistics in this case show the actual correlations between the three variables because I set up the data in this way and so you can see that the correlations are fairly modest so the highest correlation here is between y2 and y3 and it's only 0.373 so that's not very high and then the second highest is between y2 and y1 which is 0.324 and then the last one is only 0.202 so you can see that in particular y1 and y3 are not very highly correlated at all so those um, indicators share very little in common y2 does share a little bit more with y1 and also y2 does share more with y3 and that's the reason why y2 has an estimated standardized loading that is relatively decent because this variable so it has the most communality with the other variables with both y1 and y3 so y2 therefore so to say is identified as the best measure of this construct this factor because it has the most in common with the other two variables whereas y1 and y3 they have very little in common with one another so they could be said to diverge strongly so to say or not have very show very much convergent validity here and so then that could be an indicator that an indication that y1 and y3 are mostly measuring something else other than that common factor so that could mean that for example y1 um, has a lot of and y3 have a lot of method variance specific variance and or that different constructs different but related maybe constructs are measured by these variables so typically when you find small factor loadings it means your scale is heterogeneous in terms of what it measures the items measure different things they contain maybe a lot of method variants so that is a typical that's a typical scenario that really your items or your variables are not measuring a unidimensional construct but rather are multidimensional and so oftentimes we can see that when we then take a close look at the items at their wording then we find that really those are different facets or entirely different constructs that are reflected in these variables and even though maybe conceptually or in your theory they should all measure a unified construct statistically that's not found because there's so much specific variance and or um, so much variance that is uh, related to a specific construct in each variable so that is one explanation that is um, in my experience one of the most um, plausible explanations in many uh, applications where you find small loadings is that really your variables are measuring different things and they should not be used as indicators of a common factor because they're not indicators of the same common factors so they should maybe looked at in terms of separate variables in your model and then another explanation of course could be that the variables are very unreliable so remember that part of the correlation or part of why these variables are not correl correlated 
one explanation or one alternative explanation could be that they're very highly unreliable, meaning that they contain a lot of random noise, random measurement error. And we know that random measurement error attenuates observed correlations. I have a separate video on this channel in which I explain the correction for attenuation that can be used to get rid of this problem um, based on methods of classical test theory where we can estimate the underlying true score correlations. And so it could be that these variables are in fact measures of a common construct. However, due to measurement error, their correlations are so watered down that they don't correlate very highly in the observed data. There's so much noise that waters down the correlations and therefore we find um, low factor loadings. And so then in that scenario, those small factor loadings would indicate that the variables are highly unreliable. And that's in fact how the factor model interprets the scenario. So the factor model assumes that um, we are, those are proper measures, so to say, of a common construct. And now if they're so um, weakly correlated, then that the only explanation from the perspective of the factor model is that they're unreliable. And that's reflected in the R squared estimates. The R squared estimates are interpretable as reliabilities in the sense of classical test theory in a congeneric factor model. And so then that would indicate that those reliabilities are very, very small. So based on that factor model, then the reliabilities would vary between 0.175 and 0.598, meaning that only between 17.5% and 59.8% of the variance in each measure reflects true score variance and the remaining um, proportions are error variants. Now, is this plausible? I would say no. So typically it's not plausible that this entire lack of uh, reliability is, or the, the entire um, set of low factor loadings is explained by unreliability. So that's probably not plausible that the variables are so unreliable. In some cases they might be if you have single item measures and they're very um, flimsy, not very reliable, then perhaps you might um, find that. But typically when you find factor loadings that are so small, it's not entirely due to unreliability. It's more due to the fact that your measures are not unidimensional or your measures are measuring different constructs, different facets of a construct that are um, only modestly related. So then what could you do? Now, if you had enough measures, you could, of course, select the ones that are most highly correlated and get rid of some of the other ones and say, well, these are measuring something else. So I'm getting rid of those. I'm only using the ones that are strongly correlated because that is then plausible that they reflect the same construct. If you don't have that luxury of having more measures available to you, then um, one suggestion is to to don't to not put them on a common factor because it doesn't make sense to have a factor with loadings like here in this case, but instead to look at these variables individually or some of them, maybe the most important ones, and just treat them as observed variables in a, for example, regression model or in a structural equation or path analysis model, because a factor really only makes sense if you have substantial loadings. Otherwise, it's unclear what that factor would really mean if so many variables have weak loadings on this factor. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel and hit the like button. And don't forget to check out the description for additional resources. And I'll see you next time.